Capacity, Settlement, and Energy Dissipation The third article by Gajan and Cutter discusses the capacity, settlement, and energy dissipation of shallow foundations subjected to rocking. Gajan and Cutter discuss how geotechnical components of the structural system can be designed to improve the response of the structure during a seismic event. Foundations should be designed to take advantage of the soil shearing beneath the footing, which helps to dissipate energy through friction. Shallow foundations possess a self-centering characteristics during uplift caused by rocking when properly designed. Rocking structures historically survive earthquakes better than less and with less damage than those are that are rigid. However, the lack of understanding of how to design foundations that are to be the primary dissipation mechanism prevents the use of more rocking structures. Gaijin and Cutter state that dynamic soil structure interaction, yield of soil, and uplift of the footing and nonlinear coupled cyclic loading displacement behavior of the footing soil system cause analytical challenges to the footing soil interface constitutive modeling during earthquake loading. Gaijin and Cutter investigate shallow foundations attached to a shear wall structures and supported by sand and clay soils. The foundations are subjected to slow lateral cyclic and dynamic loading. The shear walls are considered rigid for steel or aluminum. The two structures are used in the test. Single wall structure with one shear wall connected to the footings and a double wall structure, two walls attached to a footing connected by a floor. A rocking camp foundation can be visualized as a moving contact problem with a contact area moving from one side of the footing to the other as it rocks. In the moving contact problem, the moment capacity, energy dissipation, uplift, and settlement are closely related to the contact area ratio. The slow lateral cyclic loading tests show that the moment rotation relationships of the footings are highly nonlinear. There is a stiffer response for the low levels of rotation, which degrades as the magnitude of rotation increases. The rounding of the soil due to the rocking of the footing causes a reduction in the contact area between the footing and the soil. The moment capacity is reached at about 2% rotation and little degradation occurs in the moment capacity at larger rotations. The larger contact area ratios produce less permanent settlement and more cyclic uplift. As the contact area ratio decreases, less uplift and more yielding occur. The dynamic loading tests show that smaller rotations produce a stiffer response in regards to the moment rotation behavior. The dynamic loading tests produce less uplift than the slow lateral cyclic loading tests due to the reduction of rotation of the footings. This test also showed that the larger contact area ratios produce less permanent settlement and more cyclic uplift. The reduction of the bearing capacity can also be attributed to the additional stresses from the inertial forces and the soil mass during ground shaking. The reduction in the bearing capacity causes a reduction in the moment capacity. The results of the testing show that when the contact area ratio is between 1.5 and 3, there's a 25 to 30 percent energy damping. When the contact area ratio is between 3 and 8, there is a 15 to 25 percent energy damping. When the contact area ratio is between 8 and 15, there is a 15 to 20 percent energy damping. The damping ratio appeared to be larger for dynamic shaking tests than for slow lateral cyclic test when the footing sits on sand. The reverse is true when the footing is sitting on clay. When the contact area ratio is greater than 8, the amplitude of rotation during the slow lateral cyclic loading does not affect the settlement of the footing. Settling during the dynamic loading tests over the same contact area ratios was larger than the settle settling during the slow lateral cyclic loading. The moment capacity of the foundations during dynamic tests are up to 25% less than those found during the slow lateral cyclic loading over the same range of the contact area ratios. In conclusion, Gaijin and Cutter found that it would be beneficial to design footings to have a large contact ratio area that will allow uplift and a considerable energy dissipation beneath the footing and to minimize permanent settlement. Settlement due to seismic loading and the Coulomb mechanism. In the fourth article by Richards, Jr., Elms, and Buddha discuss how to calculate the bearing capacity and settlement of the foundations based on the Coulomb failure mechanism. The article walks through the derivation and application of the static Coulomb failure mechanism and then shows how Coulomb failure mechanism is applicable to the seismic design. Richard, J Richards, Jr., Elms, and Buddha, Buddha begin the article by discussing the failure of several foundations where liquefaction did not occur. The reason behind the foundation failures is that the bearing capacities were reduced through seismic fluidization of the soil. The seismic fluidization of the soil does not depend on water content and is amplified by liquefaction. The Coulomb mechanism uses wedges beneath the loading to indicate failure planes. The concept behind the using the Coulomb wedges in seismic design is as the acceleration intensity increases, the active thrust increases, the passive thrust decreases, and the wedge angles become smaller. 
Thus, the seismic slip mechanism allows, becomes shallower and more lo localized until near the general shear fluidization state, the soil simply flows from under the footing. During seismic events, the active wedge moves downward and pushing the passive wedge sideways. Once this movement starts, it will continue at a constant acceleration until the velocity between the wedges and the non-sliding soil equals zero. The foundation or the research found that for the large earthquakes, all foundations will experience settling. As for the effective friction angles decrease and the seismic degradation of the bearing capacity of the soil increases. It is also possible that the large settlements due to the seismic fluidization can be mistaken for liquefaction. The settlement of the foundation occurs in a similar fashion regardless of the walls and the foundation supports. The settlement is calculated by integrating the relative velocity along the slip surface for the seismic pulse. When a design is controlled by displacement, it is preferable to start with the allowable maximum settlement and work backwards to determine the factor of safety required. Using the Coulomb mechanism provides a simplified method of developing seismic bearing capacity safety factors and determining the amount of settlement the foundation will see during a seismic event. In conclusion, all four journal articles focus on how to design shallow foundations to withstand seismic loading and the deformations caused by the seismic loading. Current engineering practice is somewhat deficient in that a factor of safety is used that does not account for the multi-directional seismic loading. Consequently, modern foundations are often designed as, rid as a rigid structure that will perform poorly during a seismic event if a seismic fluidization of the soil occurs. The article suggests that if the engineer utilizes the properties of the soil design, of the shallow foundation system can be more efficient. The structure will also perform better if the foundation system is designed to allow rocking. The rocking not only benefits the energy dissipation of the seismic loading, but also helps to prevent damage to the building structure. Engineers should consider designing foundations with multi-directional seismic loading that is orthogonal to each other along a 30 to 130 degree angle to the foundation. This loading has been proven as the worst case loading via experiments. As the loading of the foundation changes direction, the failure of the foundations will change from sliding capacity failure at 0 to 75 degrees to combination sliding and be bearing capacity failure. Applying the load in this manner can potentially increase the factor of safety by 50%. The engineer should strive to use a foundation contact area ratio of 8 or higher to reduce the effect of seismic induced rotation on settlement. The foundation should also be designed to allow uplift. The Coulomb mechanism can be used in conjunction with the recommended procedures above to find an appropriate factor of safety for the bearing capacity during a seismic event. The design of shallow foundations during a seismic event will continue to evolve as more experiments are performed and more prescriptive methods are developed for engineers. Engineers designing shallow foundations for seismic areas should be aware of the different aspects of seismic loading and effects on the foundation rather than using a factor of safety typically used today. As more engineers develop a com comfortability level with the concept discussed in this paper, shallow foundation designs will become more efficient and durable for seismic events.